Hey y'all, it's Amanda and this is my Texas Zone 8 garden and today we're going to be doing some organization regarding all of my supplies for my drip irrigation and then I'm going to take you out on the back porch and I'm going to show you an area that I have messed up on regarding drip irrigation and how I'm going to fix it. All right, so this is my big drip irrigation box. I actually think that there's drip irrigation supplies all over my garage and in a lot of different places. I picked up a couple of containers. These are like DeWalt and it's like multiple containers can be stacked on each other like this. And so I'm going to organize all of my, um, supplies into there and I've got um, this is a label maker and this label maker is like at least 10 years old it's super old school still works great I'm gonna label all the pieces just keep everything really nice and neat because now that my drip irrigation system has become more extensive it actually this takes a lot of time digging through this trying to find stuff and I just don't want to spend the time doing that so having it all nice and organized will make me feel really really good so let's go ahead and start with that Okay, so I put most of the quarter inch stuff over here and then labeled what each of them are. And the labeling is actually really more for my husband because he helps me a lot out with drip irrigation and I'll say something like T coupler and he's like, I don't know what that is. So the labeling will help the process go a little bit faster. Found out that I literally have six of these sets of emitters, which is like $20 a pop. This is ridiculous that I would have $80 worth this ridiculous. This is one of the main reasons for getting organized that I don't keep doing that. And then over here is most of my half inch pieces um, all in here. And then I still have empty containers where I'm gonna put some stuff for our sprinkler um, irrigation um, that feeds our lawn. And I'm gonna put some of that stuff in there, but yeah. And then these just close and they stack on top of each other. Super simple and easy. And then this, this is also part of the issue that I end up doing things like this. Um, it's just not a good, I mean, this stuff is not cheap, right? And so treating it like this is really not okay. I really need to do better on this kind of stuff because my drip irrigation is very important to my garden. I truly believe it's what allows me to actually garden in North Texas. Having the drip irrigation makes all the difference in the world. Drip irrigation will change your gardening life. Absolutely change your gardening life. It's a lot easier than you would think to set up. And I've got several different videos where I set up new systems or where I am adding on to an older system or just lots of different ways to work with it. And, um, but drip irrigation, it saves so much water <clears throat> and it's really what allows my garden to stay alive during the hottest times of the year. That's better. Yeah. So I'm a little disappointed in myself specifically regarding this stuff. I mean, that, I mean, I could probably just take some back and I might, I might do that. Um, I've got other projects that I want to work on so I could take, you know, three of those back. I think they're from, I think they're from Lowe's. I think this one is from Home Depot because Lowe's used to be the only one that carried the rain bird parts, that, that particular line, that brand of parts, which I prefer. But then they got rid of their uh, Rainbird parts and switched to a new company. I don't know what that one company is. And then they are switched to a new brand. And now Home Depot now carries the Rain brand of uh, Rainbird parts, which works for me because Home Depot is closer. Um, but anyway, got all this. I don't really need to buy any more line for quite <laughs> a while. And then this just stacks on top of each other. And then there, these little yellow, little yellow things just come up and pop them together just like that. Sweet. Yeah, that's a way better use of my time, 
space because you've got to realize I just took that big giant bin and, and um, condensed it down to the smaller one that's just going to be easy across the board, which will be really, really nice. I can't believe it's taking me, what, six, seven years of gardening with a, um, with a drip line to go ahead and get this done. Anyway, okay, so what I want to talk about is we're going to go out to the back porch and I have lots of beautiful terracotta pots on the back porch that are set up to drip irrigation. Now, regarding that drip irrigation, on when I was setting up that drip irrigation, I put an adjustable emitter on the center of each pot. What has ended up happening is the water has just like stayed right in the center of the pot hasn't expanded to the side hasn't expanded to the side and because of that i've had to run my um run my um drip irrigation more often because the pot is not getting all the water what i really need to do is i need to remove all of these and i need to switch to my quarter inch um, emitter uh, lines and the idea behind this let's see if I can find one of the ends on here this is what drives me crazy when I can't find the end until I find that this one is 12 inch spacing but we're gonna use 6 inch spacing basically what I need to do is I'm gonna create rings to go in the pots and the rings will do a better job distributing the water throughout the entire container um, it, I think I'll use less water because it's the smaller emitters, but it's in multiple places. So I don't have to run it as long. And I think it's also going to help with some of my pressure, some of my water pressure. Cause right now I just have one line hooked up to a bigger line and then I have a long tube. And then at the end, I've just got that adjustable emitter that I just had on the end. So anytime you have a, um, especially a quarter inch, quarter inch line that just is a long line and just has a dead stop it really messes up the pressure. You really want to connect back to the original line in order to keep the pressure consistent. So what I'm going to end up starting by doing is I'm going to make several of these loops ahead of time before we go out there. And I'm going to pre-cut several of them and put in some of the couplers just because they'll make my life easier and it's so stinking hot outside. Okay, so I'm basically going to make little rings where it's going to have one, two, three, four, five. I think I'm going to do five emitters. Yeah, that looks good. So I'm going to count emitters. One, two, three, four, five. And I'm going to cut directly in between two emitters, just like that. Okay, so I actually need 15 of those. Okay, and then from that point on, I am gonna be using what's called a tea couple, coupler or tea barb. Basically, it's a tea like this. So this one line will go directly into the line that feeds the water. And then basically, this loop will go in one side of the tea coupler. And then once I have it in place, I will put the other one in there. I don't want to go ahead and do it right then like this because then I have to get the hoop down over the plant. I'd rather just go in the base down low and do like that. This also allows me if I need to remove a coupler and make it smaller, I can. I can adjust the size. But you see how that keeps a consistent water pressure back up um, into the line. So I think it's just going to be way better than I literally just had this stuck in the middle of my pots. I think I'm going to have much better pots using this particular method. Now there are little tools that like can help you put the emitters in. I don't particularly use them. However, let me show you what works well for me. I've got, if my hands are hurting, I'll just use like a little towel and um, hold the coupler in the towel because sometimes my hands are sore and tired and this helps a lot. Okay, and then from there, we're ready to go outside and make those adjustments. It's actually gonna be pretty easy, just time consuming. <laughs> okay, so we're out on the back porch. Let me show you guys. So I have a setup of a whole bunch of pots here and a setup of a whole bunch of pots here. The problem is all the water drainage runs out and it floods the center part of my garden, which is not good. <laughs> like, 
that's not a good thing. And so um, basically, let me come over to kind of show y'all what I got going. We'll look at this guy first. Basically in here, I've got one emitter right to the center. So we want to cut out that emitter and then add in those circles that we're working on. All right, so I've got basically a landscape pen in here. So here's the tip. So what I want to do is just cut this off just like that. And the upright part of my T is going to go into this because this is where the water is coming in. Just like that. And then I kind of just want to situate it in here. And once I've got it in there, I'm going to connect this in back into here, just like that. All right, and then I'm just going to take my landscape pen and just kind of pin back on that T. So pin it back into place. Just like that. And the issue is, is I need to do that for everyone. <laughs> I've been dreading doing it. I'm not going to lie. I knew it needed to be done. I dreaded getting this set up in the first place because this, these lines, I only recently set these lines up. So once again, I'm just going to cut off that emitter and add back in the circle. And I'm going to have to do this a little bit at a time because the spinning over kills my back. show you a little bit about what's going on with this particular one so I definitely have some stuff that's not doing good let me cut those out okay so I have just one loop here of the um, of the emitters and I just you can see I just had it at the end with an emitter at the end basically this was really it's really messing with the level of um, uh, water pressure throughout the whole system so I need to get rid of this system and it's because it doesn't like wrap back in like that's literally why it just goes to an end and stops and that's just really messing with the level which is really messing with the water pressure there so I cut that in add this in and then we're just going to wrap all the way back around and secure back in and that should really help with the water pressure right here on this container this really needs to be trimmed up some the um these boxwoods i don't know if this creeping jenny will come back or not We'll see. These boxwoods really need to be trimmed up some, but it's just so hot right now. It's too hot to trim them. Okay, and I'm also going to make that same adjustment on this hanging basket. Just this one for now. My other ones are hard to reach, so I'll do that at a later time. like there's some plastic things you can put at the bottom of your baskets I'm going to do that next year to help with water retention so that perhaps I don't have to water as often 
Okay, the last part is I need to wait for my husband. He's going to be lifting the containers and we're going to be putting plastic liners underneath to catch the water so that the terracotta pot can soak that water back up so it's not just wasted water just running out. And I think that that's going to help a ton. Got some more gladiolus coming up. Really need to come ho harvest some cocoa marigolds. These are huge. They're definitely going to all kinds of places. Look how well the loofah. Now it's the hottest part of the day. It's 100 degrees outside right now, so the loofah doesn't look like super happy right now. But I will say I'm definitely seeing like right there. Let me see if I can get it. That actually is a birdhouse gourd. I believe. I could be wrong. Oh, there's another little one right up there too. See it? Super cute. And I believe over here I had seen some new baby fruit, maybe. Don't recall where it was. Oh, there's one just laying up in there. That's exciting. Still have one large one right there, too. Okay, so my audio got muffled because my microphone flipped in towards my body. So basically, I just have a collection of plastic saucers, some that I got from the Dollar Tree, some I got from Home Depot, um, some that I've just had forever. And I'm just going to get Jeff to pick up each of the pots and allow me to put a saucer underneath them. Um, I'm trying to fit them as close as possible, but I did end up with like a weird array. So some are larger than others. It kind of just is what it is. I didn't want to have to go buy a bunch or anything. I wanted to just really stick with what I already have. And the idea being that the water will catch in these saucers and that these terracotta pots, since they are extremely absorbent, will absorb more and more of uh, that water instead of it all just running out and I'm really hoping that this whole process really leads to more consistent watering for the containers plus really reduces the amount of water pouring out into the center of the garden um, I've been planning this for a while so I will definitely keep y'all updated on how it all goes okay so basically I've got saucers underneath all of these and that's just going to help with better retention if the water leaks through quickly because the plant's dry it allows time for the pot the container to suck it up now terracotta naturally like sucks away water it, it absorbs the water which isn't super awesome um, but it is what it is this one's too big but it's fine but yeah so really hoping that that is going to make the difference <laughs> regarding the drainage into this part of the yard. Hey, so we actually went out and fixed a couple of other sprinkler line issues real quick. Jeff was super excited to see all of this organized. It makes life a lot easier. Really glad to get that knocked out. That is not a fun project, especially since I, I knew that I did it wrong. I didn't figure out I did it wrong until later on when it was just dumping tons and tons of water out into the middle of the yard. I think it's going to take a good week or so of 100 degree temps to dry up some of that yard because it's been wrong for about three months. And um, for like the last couple of months, we've been watering on a daily basis. So anyway, I think this will be better. I think I'm going to be able to reduce the amount of time that I'm watering because any of the extra water is going to go get caught in the saucer and get sucked back up in. So I think that's going to work out really, really well. All right, you all. I hope you guys enjoyed watching me. I've been doing some organization, lots of organization going on, um, which has been really, really good. feels good. It gets me better prepared for the fall, which I'm looking forward to. My kids go back to school in a week. And so I think that I'm going to, this weekend, I'm really going to enjoy some time with them, all that kind of stuff. Um, it's still 100 degrees outside. So <laughs> We're going to enjoy some stuff inside. But as always, make sure you like, a comment, and subscribe to the channel. Every time you like and comment, it helps grow my channel so much. And if you don't feel comfortable dropping a comment, just drop this emoji below. I love exploring emojis and seeing what different ones there are. And be sure to check me out on my social media outlets, including Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. As always, she's a mad gardener or a decorator or anything else that she wants to be. Thanks, y'all.